Beneath nearly a mile of frigid Pacific water, something enormous is stirring, just 300 miles off the Oregon coast, where light never reaches and pressure could crush a submarine, a volcano is waking up. It's called Axial Seamount, and scientists say it's America's most active undersea volcano. For months now, the ocean floor above it has been rising, almost 10 feet higher than before. Seismometers are detecting over a thousand microquakes per day, each one a heartbeat from something deep below. The last time this pattern appeared, the volcano erupted. But that was 10 years ago. Now the signals are stronger, and the pressure is building faster. So the question is, when it finally erupts again, what happens to everything above it? Let's dive into the story of Axial Seamount, Earth's hidden ticking time bomb beneath the waves. Far below the rolling Pacific swells, a mountain rises in total darkness, one taller than anything in the Cascades, yet invisible to the human eye. This is Axial Seamount, a volcano so vast it could swallow Manhattan whole, and it's still growing. Unlike the snow-capped giants on land, this one hides beneath nearly a mile of seawater. Its peak stands 2,300 feet above the seafloor, its crater stretching five miles long, a fortress of black basalt and simmering vents. But here's the twist. Axial doesn't just live on a fault line. It sits where two colossal forces collide, the Juan de Fuca Ridge and the Cobb Hotspot a rare double engine that pumps magma from both above and below. That combination makes Axial one of the most restless volcanoes on Earth, a ticking pressure chamber that never truly sleeps. Every few years, its floor breathes, rising and falling as magma builds beneath. Each pulse is a warning, a heartbeat in the dark ocean that scientists can't afford to ignore. And lately, that heartbeat is speeding up. Axial's surface never tells the full story, the signals do. Across the summit caldera, pressure sensors and seafloor beacons are recording a steady, relentless climb. The volcano's chest is rising, breathing in, but not exhaling like it used to. That's the first sign scientists watch for, inflation without relief. Then come the quakes. Not the kind you'd feel on land, but tiny fractures, hundreds to thousands per day, snapping through cold basalt like ice under strain. Each pop is energy leaving the rock and moving into the system. The last time Axial sounded like this, new lava crossed the seafloor within days. But the number that worries researchers most isn't the quake count, it's the pattern. Clusters are migrating along the rift zones, lining up with known weaknesses that have broken before. When that alignment locks in, eruptions here don't start slowly, they switch on. Hydrothermal vents add another layer to the story. Fluids exiting the crust are getting hotter, richer in volcanic gases, and more chemically reactive. Down in permanent night, white smokers and black smokers pulse like strobes, and tube worms sway in the chemical tide. To biologists, it's surreal. To volcanologists, it's a warning. Magma is influencing the plumbing higher than it did months ago. And overhead, a wire that changed everything keeps listening. The cabled observatory relays live data back to shore. Real-time depth changes, acoustic crackles, thermal pulses, turning Axial into the best-watched undersea volcano on Earth. When the floor jumps, alarms light up screens on land. So is this just another pressurize and relax cycle? Or are we watching a system that has run out of room to store pressure? Because if the next step follows the old script, the rock will fail along a rift pressure will drop, and molten basalt will race through the breach, rewriting a map no one can see in a place no sunlight reaches. Most people will never hear Axial Seamount's name until the day it changes the map. When a volcano this size stirs, it doesn't just sculpt the seafloor, it reshapes the planet's systems. Each eruption pours out enough basalt to pave entire cities, yet every new layer traps heat, minerals, and energy that ripple through the ocean for decades. In the deep, that means chaos and creation colliding at once. Lava flows bury ancient vents, erasing ecosystems that took centuries to form, while new fissures burst open, releasing torrents of scalding water loaded with metals like copper, iron, and even gold. Within weeks, microbial colonies bloom again, proving that life can rebuild itself in the aftermath of fire. But Axial's influence doesn't end underwater. 
Every eruption triggers pressure changes that can subtly shift the entire Juan de Fuca Ridge system, an active tectonic boundary that stretches from Northern California to Canada. Those shifts can cascade into small earthquakes along the Pacific Northwest coast. The same region scientists warn could someday face a massive Cascadia megathrust event. Then there's what Axial teaches us. It's the closest thing Earth has to a working laboratory for the unknown. The volcano's vents and magma chemistry mimic the conditions that may exist on icy moons like Europa or Enceladus. NASA's exobiologists study Axial to learn how life might survive in alien oceans. And now, with swelling magma chambers and restless rift zones, Axial isn't just a scientific marvel. It's a natural experiment running out of control. Every reading, every tremor, every pulse of heat is a clue in a mystery playing out beneath three miles of water. So what happens if the readings spike past the red line again? If the seafloor fractures wider than before? The last time that happened, the ocean itself began to glow. Predicting a volcanic eruption is hard enough on land. Doing it nearly a mile beneath the Pacific? That's something close to science fiction. But Axial Seamount changed the rules. For the first time in history, scientists have a real-time window into an active submarine volcano. A network of cables, sensors, and fiber optics stitched across the seafloor feeds. Live data straight to labs on land. A continuous heartbeat from the deep. Every tremor, every pulse of heat, Every inch of rising ground is recorded instantly. This system, known as the Regional Cabled Array, has turned Axial into the world's first wired volcano. It's so detailed that researchers can watch magma chambers inflate in real time and even see pressure waves ripple through the crust as magma moves. And here's where it gets eerie. The data doesn't just describe the volcano's behavior, it predicts it. In 2011 and 2015, scientists noticed the same pattern. Slow seafloor inflation, then a sudden acceleration, followed by an earthquake swarm. Both times, those signals ended with an eruption, right on cue. Now in 2025, the same warning signs are back. Sensors are showing the same rate of inflation, the same microquakes, the same rising gas ratios. It's like watching a movie you've seen before, but this time, you don't know how it ends. What makes Axial unique isn't just that it's active, it's consistent. Every cycle builds pressure, releases it, and starts again. The question is, will this next cycle behave like the others? Or has the system evolved into something new? For scientists, it's the ultimate countdown. For the rest of us, it's a rare chance to watch a planet breathe and maybe catch the exact moment it exhales fire. When Axial finally erupts, it won't look like the explosions we imagine on land. There's no towering plume, no rivers of orange fire, only darkness, pressure, and silence. Then, in an instant, the ocean floor breaks open. A shockwave of molten rock blasts through the crust, releasing columns of lava that rise hundreds of feet before being crushed flat by the weight of the sea. Water flashes into superheated steam, metal particles fuse mid-current, and the deep turns into a world of boiling shadows. Sensors will be the first to notice. Pressure will plummet. Acoustic monitors will roar with the sound of stone cracking. And somewhere on a monitor in Oregon, a small line of data will spike, proof that an eruption has begun 5,000 feet below. The lava doesn't stay still. It flows along rift zones like glowing rivers, hardening into new crust within minutes. Hydrothermal vents collapse and reappear in new places, spraying black clouds of sulfur and iron. Life on the sea floor dies in seconds, only to return again, stronger and stranger in the weeks that follow. And even though this eruption won't reach the surface, its fingerprints will. The shock can generate pressure waves that ripple through the ocean, detectable by instruments on distant shores. In rare cases, if enough seafloor collapses, it can even trigger small tsunamis. But the greatest consequence isn't destruction, it's discovery. Each eruption rewrites what scientists know about the planet's interior. It shows how Earth builds new crust, how life survives chaos, and how fragile our idea of stability really is. Because when Axial breathes, it doesn't just reshape the ocean floor, it reminds us how alive our planet still is, and how much of it we've yet to understand. In the end, 
axial seamount isn't just another volcano. It's a reminder that Earth never sleeps. It simply hides its restlessness where we can't see it. Every tremor, every pulse of heat, every fragment of new seafloor is a heartbeat from the planet's core, echoing upward through miles of darkness. Scientists watch it not just to predict an eruption, but to understand something bigger, how our world evolves, breathes, and rebuilds itself in cycles of destruction and renewal. And even in that crushing pressure, life always finds a way back, stranger, tougher, and more adaptive than before. So as Axial continues to swell, one question lingers. When it erupts again, what new secrets will it uncover? And what will it reveal about the world we thought we knew? If you've made it this far, you're part of the 1% who actually listens to Earth's quiet warnings. Do you think Axial's next eruption will happen this year? Or are we still just seeing the buildup? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every one of them. And if you love Deep Earth mysteries like this, Hit subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next story when it surfaces. Because down in the dark, the planet is still writing. We're just learning to read it.